Gil Sigerson there with his super fan Tom Davis in the Goodison Park <laughs> stand, just shouting in the background. Uh, Ashley, he gave quite a boring answer, like, like Simon Crabtree said there. But in terms of the focus for Everton, they can't get carried away, can they? No, but I think it's exciting times for them. Um, they've earned to, you know, the conversation and to be in this, this position where we're saying, can they, can they squeeze into the top four? You know, for, for Gilfie, that's the correct answer because it is the next game. That's what the they need to focus really on. The players really think that. Yeah, I, I, I think that the, the leaders in the, in the changing room will be making sure that happens, definitely, because you can't take your eye off the ball. The games come thick and fast. Every team's dangerous. You know, they'll be cooling down tomorrow and getting their bodies, you know, right for the next game. And that's really, you just have to look after the next game always. And when you look at Everton tonight as well, we talked about it before, about maybe a few nerves coming in towards yeah. the end. Lost three in a row before tonight. You could sense that in their performance. They'll no, feel you, better for that, won't definitely. they? Definitely. You, you, you could feel it. I think the last mm. 10 or 15 minutes, when you're, when you're only... The, uh, one is never enough in a Premier League game. You can boss it in so many different ways. But if you're only 1-0 up, you're not home and dry until that whistle goes. And, and you felt that. The last quarter of an hour, they were backpedalling a wee bit. Southampton are now pushing people forward here, there and everywhere. And it's the ball's getting thrown into the six-yard box. They've got best of guard and everybody in there mm. competing for it. The goalkeeper's having to come and work hard. And, and they're a bit brittle confidence-wise at Goodison at the moment because of some poor results. Um, so sometimes, Ian, it's, it doesn't matter how it's done as long as you do it, as long as you get it over the line. And they did that tonight. Yeah, it felt like that towards the end, certainly. In terms of the result then for Everton as well, it takes them level on points with Liverpool. They've still got a game in hand as well, which they'll mm. play uh, coming up soon get away at West Brom in the week. When you sort of look at this situation, you know Everton well, what would it mean to them to have even the chance of finishing above their city rivals? A lot, I think. Uh, you know, for the for the Evertonians, it would it would mean the world to them. You know, I'm sure that the the victory uh, last weekend was sweet. And uh, no, I think that they, you need to take you know, keep it in perspective. They're having a good season. They've got a really good manager, a good squad of players. Um, they they're doing consistently well now. You know, they've, mm. they've pulled that together a little bit. This win will be massive for them at home. Clean sheet, one nil. As a defender, you'd love that. Um, and and it's as I said before, not getting too far ahead of yourself concentrating on the next game, taking care of business. And, and then, you know, when it gets a bit further on, we, we, you see where you are. Yeah, you mentioned consistency there, Ashley. And in terms of Everton, it was the first time they'd recorded back-to-back -back victories in 2021 in the Premier League. And it was an early goal, but yep. it was an important goal in the end. It was the vital goal in the game. Good Andy. goal too as well. Richarlison took it very well. Um, Gilfie Sigurdsson in too much space, just in that little pocket right there. Once he's allowed to pull that out, the sky and turn, he'll find somebody. But he's still got a bit to do there, Ashley, hasn't he, Richarlison? Yeah, I think it's a great finish on, on his weaker foot um, from a tight angle. But as you said, that's, that's a good touch. Nice release. Takes it round him. Tight angle. Good finish. Yeah. Good start for Everton. Really good goal, that. Really good work. But you cannot allow Gilfie Sigurdsson. And you were saying, Ashley, when, we were, when that happened, in terms of having somebody on the ball in that situation where they can turn and play something very quickly. He's one of the best at that you work with. Yeah, definitely. I'd say he's one of the best in the league. Where his, his timing and his weight of pass, um, he releases it. It's so difficult for a defender to turn when you're strong. He gives the striker exactly what he wants. You know, some players take an extra touch and it kills the move. Gilfie's normally on the half turn, one touch, next one's coming through with the, the right weight of pass. I, what I don't understand, Ian, about that is that Ward, Prowse and Armstrong, mm. you know if you're playing against Gilfie Sigurdsson, You've got to get in and around him. You've got to try and deny him. You can't let him, can't let him wander in those positions behind you, unless you turn around to one of your centre halves and say, "Make well, is sure it a you... communication issue." No. Well, yeah, I think it because is because they should be telling him. Yeah, he's there behind. On the flip side, as a centre half, from my perspective, you can see I them. I can see it, them. and it's not like it happened like that. It, no. He was standing. He well, didn't even move. He was standing there for a good ten seconds. And those defenders know that these two are playing together in the absence of Romeu in a slightly unfamiliar partnership, aren't they? Yeah, so you, you, you would think that they'd have spoken about that before, before the game, leading into it. And then especially when, you know, Jordan Pickford's got the ball at his feet and he's standing the wrong side of his two midfielders. If, you know, if you're a centre-half, you want to be get, dragging one back in and leave the, the furthest midfielder away is not as much of, of, of a threat. Yeah, and immediately then, if you're a Saints player, mm. with the form and the run that they've been on, you can see the goal like that, that that's a bit careless and you're chasing a game. You're... I think Ashley said it at half-time. It was about getting the basics right yeah. in this sort of circumstance yeah. and that's exactly what they got wrong. 
time and time again. Hundred percent, yeah, too often, too often in the first half. But uh, but that there is preventable. I think that that's I think a bit of communication, as we say, mm. and a bit of a bit of feel for us, something that might develop. Someone gets closer to him, force him backwards, send him wide, and all of a sudden then you get a chance to recover. But if if a number ten picks the ball up and doesn't feel any pressure, turns. He can start threading people and really good goal. Yeah, it was a good goal and it was the decisive goal, like we say. But in terms of Southampton, Ashley, they did have the chances in that second half, didn't they? Certainly towards the end of the game, it felt like Everton were hanging on a little bit. Yeah, and you, it, it was pleasing from a Southampton point of view. Uh, a little bit frustrating they didn't do it earlier, but they started to get the ball down and play with a bit of intensity. That is a great chance. It, you know, he needs to hit the target there and at least work the goalkeeper. That was the big one, I think, that they they needed to score, really. Um, but as I say, you know, pushing on. Uh, and, and as Andy said, they put a lot of balls in the box, put Jordan under pressure a lot, scramble. This was the chance, wasn't it, for Yannick Vestergaard when it falls, Andy? Yeah. Just kind of lose his footing, actually, didn't yeah. he, at the last moment? He kind of tackles the shot. He yeah. slips a little bit. And, um, yeah, he's not used to being in that position. But that was another, a good... But to give credit to Jordan, yeah. that, that's a really good save. He comes out and makes himself big. Does. Ashley, you played with Jordan. There's always, always a focus on him in this country because he is England number one, or he has been the England number one. Where do we sort of stand in, in how good he is and, and what he needs to do to, to stop all this questioning it's in? Because it's constant almost, isn't it? Yeah, I think, well, first and foremost, I've played with him. I think he's an excellent goalkeeper, one of the mm -hmm. best that I've played with. Very talented, good with the ball at his feet, which is so important these days. So agile, good shot stopper, saves like that. Um, with Jordan, I think that he probably, you know, we spoke about it during the game, he just needs uh, a, a, a patch of, of, of quietness around him. Just, mm. just consistently doing a good job, getting his clean sheets, know, you know, when the ball's coming in towards the end there, there's, there's a couple of punches he hasn't really connected with, and then that momentum builds, and then Ward-Prowse is putting it on top of him again, and he just needs a few solid, a run of some solid games, I think, where... You know, we're not talking about him so much yeah. to give him a little bit of confidence and let him, you know, play his own game a little bit. I, I totally agree with that. I think there are times when he might come and try and get involved in certain things. To his credit, he's wanting to try and help, but yeah. actually, he, it's a vulnerability for him, I think, sometimes that he wants to come and punch things over the top of a big crowd scene in front of him when he did it actually very well tonight. He, he did. Yeah. But, but, but there are times when he tries to do that, when he doesn't look physically capable of, of, of affecting it enough in that scenario, because he just doesn't have the, the sheer height that some of the real big goalkeepers have to climb over people and make good contact. But he's, he's got, he's, he doesn't, not lacking in any confidence whatsoever. No, I, actually, I think is he? He's I, a confident boy. I think he's, a, yeah, he said it's, it, it's not for, you know, it's, it's, it's not... For the a, right uh, reasons. Yeah, it's for the right reasons. But if you've got Michael Keane and Dominic Calvert-Lewin in front of you, let them go and head it. Yeah. You stay at home. Don't get yourself into bother. And that's why I say just uh, maybe he just needs some quieter games. Is he too emotional, Ashley? Because that seems to be the one sort of phrase that's always used in mm. criticism towards him. Yeah. Uh, you said yeah, though. Uh, possibly. <laughs> uh, possibly. You know, I think that he, he is an emotional uh, character. He's an emotional player. And, um, you know, some... That, Sometimes he'll do something amazing and sometimes mm. he'll make a mistake. And I just think he needs to close the gap on that a little bit mm. and just, uh, as I say, just be consistently solid, um, re-establish himself back in the team mm. and, and, and realistically do what he did tonight, which was when you're called upon, keep the ball out of the net. You know, for goalkeepers, it's a different era, this now, because they're asked, we're seeing lots of goalkeepers, but they're, they're outside the box. We're mm. asking them to have the ball at their feet, mm. something that Jordan Pickford does very well. But they're kind of getting involved in areas, certainly from my generation, they would never have gone near. If you'd have said to David Seaman, one of the best goalkeepers from my era, come out there and start doing this, no chance. He'd mm. stay in between the posts, he's under the crossbar. That's where I'm going to be if you need me, guys. I'll, I'll make sure I come and deal with something if I have to. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's a role that has probably evolved more than any other on the field, actually, over the last few yeah. years. Yeah, and, and he... He's definitely capable of that. Yeah. You know, we've seen tonight, he was, sometimes he was, you know, 10 yards away from his centre-halves and involved in the build-up. And, and he can start attacks very well, but you, you've got to ask the question by, you know, putting his energies into that, sometimes does it take away from, from his actual, what he gets paid to do, which is 
use his hands and keep the ball out the goal. So there's, there's you know, there's there's pros and cons to it. But I think that he, as an all rounder, he's you know, he's an excellent goalkeeper, yeah. definitely. Yeah, a clean sheet tonight for Jordan Pickford, only adding to the frustration at the moment for Ralph Harson Hootle. Nine matches now without a win for his side in the Premier League. Let's hear from him. Ralph, tight game, didn't go your way. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, not a good start today with the first goal, the first chance. It's not really a goal chance, it's a long ball and we don't defend it well. And then uh, the, it was a good good goal from, from each league, so maybe it was running deep, so it was tough to defend. So we have seen the same goal against Liverpool. It's, 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 it's his strength and, and we couldn't defend it in the right way. Uh, yeah, but that's it. I think from Everton, I haven't seen a lot of. Uh, they had a few chances from set pieces, and we, in a moment, uh, we cannot score. This is this is our problem. I mean, we didn't have so many chances today, um, and the last in the last third, the, the one against one, the 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 last pass, the last uh, duel to win to score is not there in the moment. Um, not strong enough, uh, and. Uh, yeah, that's the reason why we struggle in the moment of scoring goals. Uh, this is the last two goals we scored was Mino Mino, and he was out today also. And and uh, I mean, we it, it is not m missing so much. When I see the game in the second half, we tried a lot. We we Six attempts. Is there a sense of relief perhaps there tonight that it's finally arrived? Uh, yeah, I mean, so it was nice to get three points. Uh, really good to back it up after uh, good a win at Anfield. Um, obviously. Defensively, we were really good. Uh, nice to get the three points, but um, yeah, as you said, it's perfect to back it up after three points at Anfield. You find clubs up here in the stands as well. <laughs> An assist for you, maybe that's why he's cheering. Yeah, I think so. Uh, he's obviously he's Evertonian, so uh, he's, he's a good guy. Um, a goal as well for Richarlison. That's um, his third in a row now, five in five. What's changed for him? I think it was only before that run, one since September. Nothing. Uh, I think as a striker, you go through these spells where you score three and three, five and five, but then you might go through games where, where you're not scoring. But he just kept uh, kept going, worked as hard as he has always done, and uh, we knew that he was going to score goals for us, so it's just a matter of time. A clean sheet as well here at Goodison Park. Probably have Jordan to thank for that right towards the end there. Yeah, I think uh, Jordan was obviously very good. Uh, made a couple of great saves, but uh, I think the back four were fantastic. Dealing with their corner set pieces and, and uh, balls into the box. But uh, I think overall we defended uh, really well. So just finally then, you've got, what is it, two points behind fourth place. You've got a game in hand. What are you thinking now? About the next game. That's Simpl such a boring answer, Gil. <laughs> as simple as that. Uh, <laughs> obviously fantastic to get the three points tonight. Uh, we'll be celebrating tonight, but then uh, tomorrow we're back in and preparing for the next game. It's an answer that your manager will appreciate. Thank you. Well done Thank tonight. You. Cheers. Thanks.